So now we're going to be going to be looking at um, measuring uh, the rate of reaction by an initial rate method, and this is for um, an iodine clock. So the first thing I've done is I've drawn out my table with the experiment numbers, the amounts that I need in the order that I'm going to be using them. So first of all, we're going to have um, 10 centimetres cubed hydrogen peroxide, 25 centimetres cubed sulfuric acid, 20 centimetres cubed of water, 1 centimetre cubed of starch, 5 centimetres cubed of potassium iodide, 5 centimetres cubed of sodium thiosulfate, and then we're going to mix all together and take, um, measure the time taken for uh, a colour change. So for the iodine clock, the first thing we need is uh, 10 centimetres cubed of um, hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to measure this out using a burette. So I'm going to see what the initial reading is. I'm going to work out where I need to get to for the end point. Just put my finger there and then I'm going to run it through into the beaker. Watching carefully, when I get close to the end point, I'm going to slow it down a little bit and then go drop by drop. So I'm close to the end point, I've slowed it down. And that's my 10 centimetres cube, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to move this to the end next to my timer because that's where we're going to need it. Now we need to use a um, pipette to measure out our 25 centimetres cubed of sulfuric acid. So with the pet, you need to put the, um, the pet filler on the end here. You need to hold this quite firmly, you need to hold this quite firmly. Never do it like this, just in case you slip, you are then going to have broken glass going up your arm, which can be incredibly dangerous to do this going away from you. And you're going to want to twist that in there so it's nice and safe, but don't ever let go of this bit, just in case it falls. So I need 25 centimetres cubed of this. I've got one hand in my pet, the other hand in my pet up here. And I'm going to slowly run this up. There is a line on the pet filler just here that I need to get to. This bit, the middle um, bowl, takes quite a long time to fill up. But once it gets to the top, it will start filling up rather quickly. Hang on a second, I'm just going to empty that and go again. These pipette fillers are quite old and sometimes can be quite temperamental. If you have bubbles in there, don't worry, they should pop. And it is a 25 centimetre cube line just here. So now I finally have my 25 centimetre cubed sulfuric acid into my measurement cylinder. I can just press the release on the pet filler here, or just push here to um, make the sulfuric acid come out. Now I'm going to need to use this same pet again, so I'm just going to lay that to the side and put that like that. Next into my flask, I need to have 20 centimetres cubed of um, distilled water. I need to do that with a um, pet. Uh, dropping bottle into a measuring centre, so I'm just going to measure that roughly until I get close to 20. And then I'm going to need to look for the meniscus, so I'm now going to go drop by drop, running it down the side until I get to 20 centimetres cubed, and that can now go in there. I now need to add one centimetre cubed of starch, and I'm just going to be doing that with a dropping pet. You'll see that I have 0.5 and 1 on the side here, so that's up to one centimetre cubed. That can go in there now. Now it wants five centimetres cubed of potassium iodide. Again, I'm going to be doing this with the burette, so I'm going to see where my start point is, see where my end point is, and just run that slowly through. Once I get close to the end, I'm going to slow it down. And then stop. After the potassium iodide, I need 5 centimetres cubed of sodium thiosulfate. So in exactly the same way. So I'm going to stop. Now I have my solution here, I have my hydrogen peroxide here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do this on a white tile so you can see it a bit clearer. 
is mix the two of them and we are looking for the time taken for a colour change. So as soon as I'm mixing, I'm pressing start. Okay, so I've eventually got this uh, to work and when it goes, it goes very, very quickly. Um, it's good if you maybe do some pairs, um, one person adding a solution and stirring, another person doing the timing, just because you can't move your hands quickly enough to get an accurate result. You can take it in terms of each different um, concentration so you can get your qualification. Um, when this goes, it goes incredibly, incredibly quickly. It's a split second change. Um, if you have a magnetic stir available to you, those are really, really handy. Those are really, really um, great to, so you don't have to stand as stirring for the time that it takes. And um, you'll see in the upcoming videos a few different ways that it doesn't work so well. Um, it's good to have a white tire so that you can see the colour. There we go, and a split second change, and it's gone. If you have magnetic stirring available to use, these will make your life a lot easier.